he could he looked at me he was like you look absolutely exhausted i was like i am i was like i'm exhausted for just breathing and that's literally all i'm doing So extremely long now. But how cool does that look? Good morning, I heard the noise. Good morning, Dixie. Good morning, Dixie. Nice yawn. Well, good morning and welcome to our day. We've just got in the car. So he's putting her strap on. Or so he's putting my strap on. Oh well, Yeah. And we're off the hospital. It's too early and my my lungs are not functioning great. I'm really breathless, gunky, and I got this pressure in my lungs that's horrific. And I still have no hope for a result of today. But hopefully it's a good thing that you're feeling pretty rubbish because quite a lot of the time whenever you have um, the like these appointments, you're on one of your better days, so they don't actually see you at your worst like at one of your worst days for a really long time. Well yeah, like patient. Yeah, community worst days yeah. they don't really see. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be a good thing. Who knows? We can only hope. So, with my smexy hair. Can you get your seatbelt? Yeah. Don't forget it, will you? Nope. We're not going to see you. So, me and the girls are in the car waiting for Charlie. You just about see him there. Um, we've been here for a while now, um, probably like an hour and three quarters, I would have said, probably. We got here. Um, like over an hour early which is it's quite nice actually because sometimes like it's really hard to park as you guys would know from previous discussions with you um and we waited for about 20 minutes and then managed to park 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 um and then charlie had three quarters of an hour nap before um she had to go to her appointment which was amazing um, so her appointment was 12, I don't know what time it is now, let me see if I can figure that out. It's 1 now, so she's been there for about an hour. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be an, an hour long appointment or whether it might have been a bit longer than that. Um, because of the fact that it's new consultant and stuff, we're not, not really sure, so I guess we'll just have to see. Um, I just had to like partially open the windows and run for a wee because I, my bladder could not hold anymore and I was just like the girls are in the car and it's it's actually kind of hot and I'm not okay with it but um luckily I was only gone like five minutes I mean I mean I didn't like run because that would have been asking for problems because it's downhill but I did walk really quickly, so my knee hurts, but it's okay because I didn't pee myself, didn't, um, and they were okay. They were okay. It's the only thing, like, I've never had to do that before when I've been waiting in the car with the girls, um, but... Yeah, that's the only issue really with bringing the girls with us, but we don't really like take, leaving them at home, especially seeing as on Wednesday, um, we're gonna have to leave them at home because Charlie's got um, an, an eye hospital appointment here. 
so the chances are they're going to be putting stuff in her eyes so that she's going to find it hard to see so I'm going to have to be there to help her not run people over um, and like because we because we're on benefits we can claim travel money back um, so I'll have to sign for that as well because she won't be able to see what she's writing which will be quite funny um, well, that's really sweet. There's a, a lady and presumably her daughter in front of me. Um, they've just got out the car. And um, the daughter's... The mum just fully put up a scooter for her so that she could ride around on her scooter. It was really cute. Oh, What you know seeing that? Dixie? Hi, Albert. Hi, Dixie. Hi. Kind of got a good bit there. Um, but yeah, so I keep sort of going like really hot and then really cold because it, it's really hot today, but at the same time the breeze is really cold, so we have to have the windows open because otherwise it's just too hot. But with um, with the windows open, there is such a breeze. Plus, whenever we're in the car, I've probably told you guys this before, but I can't remember. Whenever we're in the car with the girls, um, Dixie's just always panting and she gets really hot. And I think it's her excitement. She just wrecks herself up and then she gets really hot and stuff. So, um, she, so we have to have the cold air blast in. Otherwise, she's just sort of like panting and it's not very nice. So we've got to have the cold air really highly, like, full-on blast of cold air. Which is really cold on my hands, so every now and again I have to turn it down a little bit. But then she gets too hot, so then it's just, it's awkward. But I'd rather suffer with cold hands and just being cold than leave them at home on their own when they don't need to be. But yeah, I'm sure we'll get a... Well, I know for a fact that Charlie will give us a nice long update uh, when she gets back. So, we will lo I will love and leave you with these beautiful girls. Look at her squinting at the sun. And she's in a tiny bully. You in a tiny bully, Dixie? Don't talk to me, Mum. Yeah, Mum. Gorgeous. Beautiful. You beautiful girls out there. <coughs> so yes, speak to you later.
I'm back in the cars, people. Lots. And I've been here two to three hours because it was on the third pay band that we had to do. Okay. Yeah, and wowzers. I needed a wee when I first went in there. And I just said to Sophie that the disabled bit right by the chest clinic, there was somebody in there and there was a cleaner. And he was just like, oh, I need to go in there after this person. I was like, I just need a wee. He was like, oh, no, but I need to clean it by this time. And I was just like, I literally just need a wee. Does it, do you really have to do it? Like, like would, it, would, would a few ma extra minutes really matter? And he was just like, well, there's a toilet down there to the left. So I did that. And then, um, well, yeah, ignorant git. So I went down to the toilet where he pointed and the nurses saw me like struggling, trying to get in. You're cool, keep going. Keep on, keep on, keep on moving. Do you remember that on the dance mat? I used to love that one. On... Huh? Maybe we could invest in one. If we can get the Wii working. But then you can get it on PlayStation. Huh? Uh, yeah, maybe we can get one for the PlayStation. Oh. Oh, so, back to the story of the Wii. Um, well, she's a right turd, isn't she? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the nurses saw me and was just like, you're really going to struggle in there, lovely. Um, but there is a toilet right down here, and she had to show me it was that far away. And it was right back to the main entrance, like, an entrance I didn't even go to. And um, I was waiting, and then a woman came out, and she'd been smoking in there. And I'm like, for God's sake, I'm going to have to go, because I'm literally going to wet myself. Since I've had my catheters... Hang on, babe, there's a car. Since I've had my catheters, my bladder is, like, really crap. So I had to go pee, and then I reported the toilet. Get to chest clinic. No. Um, yeah, get to the chest, chest clinic, do my lung function. Last May, my percentage of lung function went up to, I think it, 48%, I think it was which is, for those that follow lung function, it's an FEV1 of um, 1.82. Today's lung function, my FEV was 1.29, which gives percentage of 34%. So it's like dropped by 14%. Um, was it oh and I nearly passed out whilst I was doing it it just I couldn't like breathe with it and then he goes in to see the doctor and he's just like oh I don't think we've met he says this every yeah he says it every time he sees me I was like yeah you looked after me for majority of my stay on um like last September to uh, August to September, you was just like, no, I didn't. I was like, yeah, and, and you saw me the last time I was there. You actually sent me home on home oxygen. No, I've not seen you ever. And he looked at the notes. He was like, I'm very sorry. I've seen you quite a few times. I was like, yep, you say that every time as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yes. Which I was sat in chest clinic and somebody looked at me, then went down, then looked again. I'm like, I was about to say, nope, I'm not them. Um, so yeah, I went into the Dr. Patel um, <coughs> and Bev, the nurse, was there as well, the lovely one. And I've obviously said about the shit time that I've had. 
and um, they he could he looked at me he was like you look absolutely exhausted I was like I am I was like I'm exhausted for just breathing and that's literally all I'm doing and I'm getting loads of colds loads of infections and it's just really cheesing me off to be fair um he is contacting immunology to see why they haven't responded to me and to at least consider me in clinic um he's done bloods today to check my um igg level which is obviously the infection markers uh the um immuno response markers because they were on the borderline when we checked last year and I took and said to him I was like not being funny but when I started my um IVIG my levels were borderline like they are now and yet they said we'll trial it to see if it makes a difference and it did but the only reason why we stopped was because I needed a break and they said we could go back on it whenever we wanted and it's just been hell trying to do that so he huh oh yeah so um he is all like writing all that into the letter and whatever um he said when i have a next bad spell obviously with my lungs um if it's like really productive sort of thing obviously send a sputum which is why i got pots but he's also turned and said that he wants me to go to the doctors and get my blood levels done just to see what's what is happening whether they do go up or down or not because obviously there's been plenty of times in the past of me where i've had infections but my blood doesn't go up too much but when you then look at the x-rays and scans and whatever and microbiology i've always got like really bad infections um and obviously because of the steroids it make it plays with your blood and so i gotta do that um he said he asked whether i was still seeing physio yeah and i said no and he was just like how come you don't see her anymore if you're struggling to get off your chest and i was like because every time i went to her we just sit and chat and she wouldn't actually do any physio so obviously bev heard this as well and he was just like, well, is it something you would try again? I was like, to be honest, there's absolutely no point. It's just wasting my time. Um, and I said, huh? Yeah. Um, <coughs> and thankfully, um, when I was in there, I um, had one of those episodes with the cough that I get. So he could hear it. And... Um, He's just like, well, in the meantime, I don't want to just leave you how you are whilst we sit and wait for immunology because they could be months before you get an appointment. Oh, I like him. Yeah, he's really good. I don't understand why people don't like him. He's, it's like certain people don't like Mazzoli, and I just don't understand because they are both very good doctors. Um, and I turned and said to him that the coffin is getting that bad that it's making my hernia huge also causing pain and he was like um like he wanted to know about if i needed any other acid like and acid stuff and i was like i don't necessarily get reflux it's just horrific pain where it's getting so large no so i don't think it's actually out at the minute um so what he's done he's doubled my antibiotic no my normal one to try and do as a preventative and he's also doubled my inhaler um just to see if that will just open up my airways a bit more and and then obviously protect from future bugs speak up we can't hear you yeah It goes to 15 mils now. Okay, that's Yeah. No, I mean, I said that to him. I said, when I first went on the azithromycin, when I was under Birmingham, I had it every day. And he took and said that, um, 
to give it a go first of all just double in the dose monday wednesday friday first so i said that's cool um and then obviously with the foster inhaler he's doubled that um he's obviously right into the gp he said he's going to copy me into it which i'm glad of yeah um on my way out i spoke to the nrd team about the mask and what <laughs> and they said it's not one that they stock and they wouldn't ever stock it and they wouldn't even get it in specifically for me so they've asked if i'm happy to buy it i was like to be honest i don't really have a choice because it's the only thing that doesn't mark or make my face extremely sore and it actually allows me to actually then use my CPAP and be in comfort especially because the price isn't any different so yeah that's the whole roundup of chest clinic update what yeah um, Bev saw me in the reception, but like in the second reception. Oh, yeah. I'm going down. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Bev was like, you really don't look. Yeah, like not this reception, but at the beginning, the second one outside lung function. And she said, you really don't look well. I'm going to come in on your appointment. Yeah, um, they are fantastic there because like they've done so much. So we, as you can see, guys, we are now on our way home. So guys, usually when it's nap time, Charlie sleeps on the sofa and I'm out in the reading nook and the girls always always come and sit on me so today we thought we would see how it would go with Charlie being in the reading nook to see if she gets snuggles so we shall let you know later if it's a success or not hello everyone we are back home I'm exhausted beyond ex any exhaustion I've just had a little bit of summit summit to eat after a few more months I think you guys when we're sat in this position and I suddenly go I think you guys are going to pick up that that's safe doing this with her toes on my leg. I can't help it. Can't help it. <clears throat> Look, let's, let's show them what it is that you do. She sits there constantly just doing that. And I have a huge feet, feet, foot phobia. And I just... Oof. You don't have a problem with my foot. Well, no, they're different. Oh, they smell amazing. When, when we, when Dixie was a puppy, I used to sniff her feet, and I'm like, so I was her feet by it. I was just smell like, amazing. And she's just like, that's disgusting. I was like, just take a whiff. And at first, she wasn't a hundred percent, but after a few more whiffs, she was just like, <sighs> and it is the best. I don't know if all dogs have it or whether it's just our girls, but... I remember talking to somebody... Oh, yeah, and they said that they love sniffing their dogs. I think it was feet. Caroline from Fletcher. So, yeah, if you have a if you have a dog... Um, not necessarily smell their feet as soon as they've just come in from outside, but if they've just been in the house for a little while... if they've been asleep. Oh, that's the best one. It's amazing. My nose looks big today. It is, anyway. So I've got a letter today and it's from Russia. Look at all these cool stamps. You probably can't even see it. But you get the gist. 
And dun dun dun. Cool. So sexy. Ooh. And it's got some other really cool stamps. It's amazing. Mummy. Yeah. I'm like gonna lock that on your phone. Yeah, it's different. Well, that seems very easy. Really easy off, they better both be in here. Mm. Ah, there's little chocolates. Easter eggs. <gasps> One of them's a bunny with a mummy bunny. So the first. Oh my god, they're adorable! Is these little dotty ones with they're the little adorable. frill? They're adorable. You're Aww. adorable too. How cute is that? I'm cute too, Mum. They can't yeah. see me. And then the other pair is this. And it's got That's a so pom pom. Three chocolates! Whoop, whoop! Oh! Well done, so sexy! It's really cute. I like that they've tied the theme in with Easter but also with each other. But you yeah! And really cool stamp. <laughs> so, yeah, that was so sexy. Oh! <laughs> They've even enlarged these up. I just think it looks bigger. Because it normally. They've even enlarged these up. Because <laughs> it's normally. I mean. They must be getting They're there. different. Okay. So cute that you wouldn't want to wear them. So comfy that you wouldn't want to take them off. Fun to wear around the house. Our socks are fun to wear around the house and comfortable enough for the outdoors. We hope you're having so much fun wearing them as we did making them. So they've got our socks are fun to wear. No, our socks and then the same. And then at the end it's got we hope you have as much fun wearing them as we did making them. Yeah. It's a bit weird though. I wouldn't have thought they would have needed to like put in bigger ones, but. But it seems more impressive, plus obviously it's easier to read on the bigger one. True at that. Should we see what Easter Tesco's thing we've got as well? This should be about £20, I think, if this is the monthly one or whatever it is. No, just Easter. 25 extra points on any Easter eggs. Double points. Valid in two stores. 25% extra points. Frozen veg. Vegetarian or meat free products. That was vegetarian, not <laughs> veg. Vegetarian. 25 extra points on daffodils. I'm not going to buy their daffodils because they keep putting them in the. They keep taking them out of the water bit and putting them in the reduced food section. No. 25 extra points on household spring cleaning products. 25 extra points fresh strawberries. 25 extra points on double strength squash. 25 extra points on fresh plums. None of that really seems particularly Easter apart from the Easter egg. No. I mean, I kind of get, you spring know, cleaning. spring cleaning. Yeah, you kind of get that one, but there, none of the others are very no. Easter like. Hmm. Well, that was boring. I'm gonna go sleep. So see you in a bit. Hmm. Thanks to Alba and her toes, I've got the receipts in, like 
after the day, so I've missed out on points. We've been cleaning their feety pegs. And after Sophie had brushed in between their toes, I noticed that Alba still had like mud stuck on her actual nails. So I was picking at that. And now uh, I've missed the receipt thing. <laughs> it was. Look at that, I've picked up the camera. So it's given them their treat balls because obviously they've done we've done everything. Picked up the camera and she's gone and done that straight away. This is uncomfortable. Sitting looking at the drawer. She's so damn cute though. Too cute. You wedged that in. <laughs> I'm not gonna show you where they wedged it. Give it me then, mum. <laughs> I was gonna say something but I forgot. Damn it, it was about today's appointment. Oh, I remember. Um, the doctor today, I forgot to tell you as well. Um, That'd be what I could think to help. Yeah, it's literally came into my head this evening. He also said that there's now evidence to show that people who have had... <coughs> multiple like <coughs> severe asthma attacks which i've had my fair share um it can now remodel your lungs so your airways normally in like um an asthma attack your your airways like this normal and then in an asthma attack they go like this oh let's actually make it so you can see she just farted ugh um it but was Alba by the way <laughs> it wasn't it was safe um <laughs> but people who've had multiple severe asthma attacks instead of their airways reacting like this their airways are literally like this 24 7 which is when your oxygen struggles to stay up you get more breathless even when you're not having like an attack or anything like that. So I'm um, presuming then when you do have an attack, it gets smaller again? Yeah, and it takes longer to recover. That um, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, he didn't state when this evidence had just come in, but he said it was reasonably new. Um, and obviously they, they think that the likelihood is, is that that's what's happened with my lungs because mm. of everything. Um which it's not surprising really to like if you think about it i mean the last 10 years i've had more asthma attacks than i've like can even remember now yeah um i mean i've got to be hitting nearly 80 to 100 probably mm. more um so yeah it's it's no surprise it is constant um but that's just life. I mean, I am a bit gutted about my lung function. I have to admit that. The 11 months ago, we had got it to, like, nearly 50%. Yes, but... I mean, yes. But you have increased it before, so... Mm. Like, you've, you've been down to, like, 20-something before. Yeah, and then they, I, that's that's when I then increased it to the 48, which was last year. So, as long as we can get back on track with like sorting the lungs yeah. and preventing the infections and crap then hopefully maybe we can increase it again that's the hope she's really staring at me you're talking about your medical stuff yeah i always use this stuff yeah you're very good look at the little flick in her hair oh that's my finger Alba? Alba? Yeah? Can you guys see it? I've got some was bloody cute. Eh? And Pickles thought I was calling Alba for um, the draw, but we're not. Tomorrow is going to be a well-deserved rest day before we go at it again on Wednesday at the hospital. The girls can't come with us on Wednesday because I need Soph to help me. 
um, because it's for my eyes and they're going to be putting drops in that I'm going to lose my vision. Oh, um, so yeah, I don't know where the eye hospital is. To me trying to get back in a wheelchair, blind. I know which direction of the, like which part of the hospital it is. I don't know how to I've, get there. I've landed in it a couple of times when I've taken the wrong lift or yeah, because it at our hospital you go in on the sixth floor <laughs> and then you either go up or you go down, but that's only the one set of lifts that do some floors and then other lifts take you to the other end of different floors and yeah, oh so, my god like, some lifts take you down to level three but they don't go up any higher than level six yeah and then there's other ones that take you up to level 12 but they don't go any lower than level six oh, it's just a nightmare it's a, i mean it's a huge place and considering we've been at this hospital more times than I can count. You still get lost. It's one of the places that I haven't actually been though for any treatment because all my eye stuff before was when I was up in Bristol yeah. um, and Western. That's when I got told out about my cataracts. So hopefully we can figure out what's going on with these yeah, freckles. Did you have a nice day? Yeah, Mum. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Are you, you going to show the people your drink face? Alba? You fell onto my t-shirt. It's not a wink face. <laughs> so yeah, yeah we're, water. we're absolutely pooped. It's yeah. been a bloody exhausting day. Um, so I'm going to now take my meds, my new doses of meds. And we're going to get the vlog done. Oh. Aww. Thank you. Can you see my mom? Yeah. Where's Dixie? Where's Dixie? Where's Dixie? Where's Dixie? Show mummy. Show mummy. That mummy? She's over there. She's so clever. Mm. Earlier on, Soph gave her some broccoli and said, go take it to mummy. She took it, like she bought it to me and didn't even eat it. She she was tempted. Very. She hesitated. Yeah. She did bring it to you. I, which we are, I think uh, it's the first time she's ever had yeah. broccoli that she's actually managed to take it. Yeah. So Normally she's before. just like, nah, nah, nah. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a proud mummy moment. It was. Yeah. It was just having a scrap. Yeah. So, we're going to get the vlog done i've already got some gunk to send off tomorrow that actually looks like part of my lung <laughs> it looks a little bit disturbing and it's like all blood streaked and crap it looks really we've not seen one like that before have we no so I'm hopefully sure what no either they can just tell us by looking at it like whether it is just part of my lung <laughs> or whether it is like some form of bug. I'm not sure you can cough up part of your lung, can you? Remember that time I coughed up that little ring thing? Yeah, I really don't know what that was. No. I what coughed was and it? it was this it was God I can't even think. No. Do you know if you know hammer beads, they're those ones that you can put in a pattern and you can iron them and they like melt together. It was literally like a hammer bead. Mm. <laughs> and strange. I coughed, obviously I covered my my face with my hand and this little ring just landed in the palm of my hand it was like i don't know what this is yeah, it was really gross it was so let's hope we can get something told to us with this what we've um offed up hmm. yum what are you doing i'm just, i'm just tired i'm trying to keep myself awake <laughs> <laughs> so yeah Thanks for coming on our day with us, guys. And we hope you've had a good beginning of the week. And we'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Monday, April 8th. Yeah, it's Monday. Yeah, it's Monday. Father to the fatherless. Father to the fatherless, defender of wi widows. This is God, whose dwelling is holy. Doesn't your heart ache for the fatherless children in this world? Many of these little ones weep for their daddy they never had.
Others have gone without for so long that they don't know any other way of life. They don't even know how to mourn for what they've never had. As members of Christ's body, we have an obligation to care for those in need and fill in the gap when parents are missing. But we also have an obligation to share the good news that God is the best daddy of all. How our Abba Father sweeps in like a knight on a white steed, ready to show his sons and daughters that he'll care for them, no matter what they're going through. He's a fierce protector, one who cares greatly about those who've been overlooked or abused. Perhaps you're in need of a reminder that God is your daddy. Lift your hands towards heaven and let him sweep you up into his arms. Even now, he's dancing and singing over you, longing to fill the voids in your heart. It does my heart good, Lord, to remember you are a father to the fatherless. What a loving daddy you are. How you defend the weak. How you care for those in need. How trustworthy you are. I stand in awe of your tender care for your children, Lord. Amen.